Hi everyone, this is Tom Cherry Holmes with the latest video in the Retro Computing Archaeology series, in which we take a deep dive into the in-house level editor used by id Software to create Doom, Doom 2, Her uh, and used by Raven Software to create levels for uh, Heretic and Hexen. As a millennial, I think we're all kind of, at least my generation and Gen X, are all familiar with Doom, the first-person shooter that improved upon Wolfenstein 3D's play mechanics and rendering techniques and, brought, and took everything up basically a notch. Doom was, as a game, immensely fun to play, and in a wonderful twist, uh, the creators of the game left it open for other people to easily create levels for the game. Thing is, they didn't exactly release the level editor at all. And save for a few photos around the office of id Software uh, and some screenshots floating around and the people at Raven that used it to create Heretic and Hexen, uh, very few people have actually seen or used the level editor that these people use to create the levels for these games. With that said, the wonderful thing about computer archaeology is that the artifacts that are put together, that are found, can be assembled together into living artifacts. Artifacts that other people can experience and interactively use themselves. So if you want to follow along, you can actually go to the link that is in the video description and here at the top of this video here to grab a copy of Next Step 3.3 containing a copy of Doomed and a lot of other goodies as well. So with that, let's get started. Here we have a freshly booted up uh, machine. This is an Intel Pentium 200 uh, running uh, Next Step 3.3. We can see this by clicking on the dock to bring up the workspace. Let's go to the info. Let's look at the info panel. And we'll see in the info panel that we have system release 3.3 right here. 128 megs of RAM. Yes, I've maxed this out, but it makes this environment very nice to use. Next Step was available for a number of other platforms as well, such as the original Next Black hardware, the Next Stations, the Next Cubes, etc., as well as Spark Stations, uh, HP Workstations, uh, and so on. Basically, a lot of different targets that you could take and target uh, doing a bit of software development here. As part of this process, uh, we went through and grabbed the original sources to Doomed, and we combed through, and I combed through them, looking at all the individual bits and pieces of code, uh, seeing how everything fit together. And actually, I had to take and do a modification uh, to one of the bits and pieces of code here so that uh, I could actually have access to the right mouse button because uh, basically, uh, for some reason, 86 box that I'm using here would not allow me to uh, actually uh, would not allow me to actually take and use the right mouse button here, right mouse down. So I had to take and do a few little modifications of my own so that I could take and get access to the right mouse button here. So, but because of that, I was actually able to go through, edit the source code here, and open up the project, uh, project builder project here, and this is another, this is really a point here. You can go through, you can look at the source code, you can see how this particular piece of software was put together, and you can build it if you wish. I was able to take and, and put this all together so that we could do this demonstration. So, source code's here. You can look at it. But let's take and do a little tour around Doomed itself. Do this by going over to, I'm actually gonna hide the workspace here because I've got it over here in my dock. I'll start it over here 
and I've got a project already set up so that when you first go in, it will automatically load uh, Doom One, the Doom One project with the Doom One maps here. We have a project inspector down here that we can use to select stuff and a toolbox up here. But let's start by going into the info panel. This is the info panel or the about box if you think about it for other platforms here. And we can see Doomed, the Adobe Illustrator 5.0 for world maps. We have a copy right here and some emails that uh, probably are no longer working. But there are some interesting surprises in here. For example, uh, we can click on the demon. Do that again. Or we can click on either of their faces. Fun things, I think, but they're there nonetheless. Um, we also have basically uh, a preferences panel which I've altered ever so slightly to make it more contrasting with this particular display, but you can go through and you can change uh, you can change all of the colors for the various features inside the program, as well as choose the project that you're wanting to take and load, and which particular palettes you actually want open upon launch. To go a bit further, uh, we have Doomed has the concept of a project, and a project really is nothing more than just a grouping of the individual maps plus their assets and everything together in one file that should basically points to where everything needs to look. The project file itself really isn't much to write home about. It's the thing about Doomed, and uh, that's pretty much universal throughout all the files and things that it creates, is that all the files are text. So if we look at, for example, the DPR file here, it shows that this is indeed a text file. We can look at it, and we can see Doom Project version 1, and we've got a handful of paths that are pointing to uh, local directories on my system. These could have been because this is NextStep, and NextStep was a uh, network-aware operating system. These could be resources on a remote file server somewhere else, even to the point where you could actually take and run the uh, BSP uh, built the, the BSP builder, which was separate in this program. You could run that on a different system, presumably one with more processing power than the workstation that you're currently on. And in a pattern that basically repeats throughout the other files, you have a line that contains the number, you know, that contains the number of items in this file listed by their projects here. And that's the extent of the project file. Now, drilling down a bit further, if we'll go ahead and hide this again, we'll go into E1 M1 here. Click on it, bring it up. And here is the level for E1M1. Now, this is the main level editing window here. We have the main map view here. We have a set of scroll bars which can be used to move and pan around the view. We have the ability to set different grid snap positions so that when you're taking and placing things, you can choose how finely grained you want to place them. 8 is usually pretty good. Uh, I just typically leave it here. I think most everybody else did too. And of course you've got the zoom. So you can zoom in and you can zoom out. And as we can see here, this is the familiar E1M1 that we saw earlier in the intro video here in all of its glory. In my opinion, one of the best levels ever created in terms of Doom level design. But you can see that we have a lot of different pieces on here. Uh, this brings us essentially to the, uh, I mean, actually, I apologize. I literally need to bring up my script here so I don't lose my place. This brings us to our toolbox, which allows you to take and select what particular tool that you want to use inside the map editor window here. 
And if you'll notice, a common trick that you'll see in a lot of next step applications, you see here the shortcut keys, which you press with the command key, which on uh, PCs is the Alt key. So Command K to select, Command L for line, Z, Z for zoom, and so on and so on. We'll keep it on select for now so that we can take and look at some of the other bits and pieces. We also have two buttons here which basically serve to uh, connect and disconnect individual uh, vertices that make up line defs here from their surrounding shapes so that you can take and break them apart. Um, so coming down a bit further, we have Our project, which we'll, we'll kind of get back into a bit later, you have uh, some other bits and pieces here that we may touch on a bit later for doing things like looking at the total map statistics for your entire project and doing things like saving out the textures that you use to graphic files so that you can take and open them and paint programs for later. Presumably for, you know, for whatever purpose here. You also have uh, a little debugging menu here so you can quickly save and load and save everything up together. Now, I'll go ahead and skip up to the panels here because this is actually the second most important part along with the toolbox of everything that you're going to use inside of Doomed. And you'll see as I'm selecting menu options, if you're not familiar with Next Step here, the menus actually take and show up to the right of whatever you're clicking on and it's anchored to the top of your menu. But there's also another trick that may not be immediately evident. If you wanna take and you can peel off a menu so that you can keep it always visible. And this is a good thing to do, for example, with the panels menu. And we can use this for all sorts of purposes. And we go down the panels menu, we have what is essentially an error log. Any errors that happen uh, with the program will ultimately show up here and you can clear it at any given time. Close that out. You have uh, what is called the line inspector. And the line inspector is probably is one of the most important parts of the editor here because it allows you to alter the properties of each one of these individual lines. Let's take and zoom in a little bit better so I can click on stuff better. Boop. Let's say we want to take and look at one of these lines here. We'll pick one. And what happens is the properties, the way that uh, the way that next step essentially worked and all the applications essentially worked, you had the concept of inspectors, which were small windows called panels that were opened up and would alter their information based on what is currently selected inside of the document window. So as I take and move around the map here, you'll see differences as uh, various things change, such as the line length and the textures used and etc. So looking through the line inspector here, you of course have, uh, you have you have points and coordinates. Uh, these are uh, these show line defs and their relative position inside the map. But you also have uh, line length, which is extremely important when you're trying to take and match textures up. And if you're familiar with other, uh, if you're familiar with other editors, some of the things that I'm going to show in here are going to look a little bit different because the other line, the other editors that were made after Doomed had to figure out a lot of things on their own using what little bits of documentation had come out from its software and what had been reverse engineered from looking at the raw WAD files themselves. And in fact, I will take and do a small aside here and we'll pull away just for a moment. And then what becomes a repeating pattern? Each one of these files E1M1, E1M2, etc. These are Doom World definition files, or basically textual expressions 
Text formatted expressions of each of the levels and all of the assets inside the level, the individual lines, the, the, the uh, line definitions, the sector definitions that are attached to them, uh, line def, side def definitions, etc. All of them here. Again, following much the same pattern. You have a header, you have the number of assets used as a guard, and then you just dump all the data, at which point you've got all the line defs here followed by the things. And you'll notice that the things here are basically just coordinates along with the thing type uh, and uh, any special, uh, anything special that's attached to it, any special attributes. So again, textual format used throughout the entire program. Go ahead and quit and go back. And I apologize if I seem to be bouncing around here. I'm literally doing this on the fly using what is essentially a script right to the right of me to try and stay on course. But there are some things that really need to be pointed out. Looking back at the line inspector here, if you're familiar with Doom editors, a lot of things will look familiar to you, some not so much. Uh, in particular, first row and first call. These correspond to the X and the Y and X positions for a texture so that you can set texture offsets. Y position, X position and followed by the texture definitions for the side defs. The thing, that, the thing to really note here with Doomed is that there's, no, um, there's not an explicit separation in the user interface for side defs, line defs, and sectors. Doomed takes and derives these things and tries to put them into what they considered uh, important uh, user interface abstractions here and does all the magic back behind to take and build all of the different structures inside the WAD file. And as we'll see a bit later, there's no uh, explicit sector, there's no explicit way to take and just say, take these line defs and put them into a sector. The, the line editor, the, the editor will actually, Doom Ed will actually figure this out on its own. Um, so, of course we have our texture here. And this is, since this is an impassable window, it's marked here with block. You'll also see the familiar two-sided for transparent middles. Uh, and one other thing to really notice here, F-top, F-bot. What are those? Uh, those are basically, you'll see those in other editors as texture unpegged. Top, top texture unpegged, bottom texture unpegged. And they affect how these two fields are rendered respectively. And they're very important if you're trying to take and use a consistent, if you're trying to use a texture on a transparent line def that potentially has a different height or, you know, it has a different height from the surrounding sectors so that you can get things to line up correctly. So how do we take and, for example, deal with a particular texture on the line inspector? Well, for that, we need to actually go into the texture palette. We look at the texture palette, it opens up a little window here. I'm gonna take and remove this project, ins uh, project inspector here. And we have a texture palette. Well, we can take that and we can scroll down and we can see all of the individual textures that we have available to us. And these are actually populated from a series of files that are part of the project structure. These are not automatically defined from the WAD file. So these have to be, when you're creating a new particular project, you have to take and populate these files somehow, even if what you're doing is essentially copying them over. Uh, the way the texture palette essentially works is we can, for example, uh, set the texture palette so that we can see, okay, which texture is this? Okay, this is star tan three. Okay, if we come over here to another line, for example, we're still using the select tool. That is also star tan three. Let me look for something else. I know I'm doing, I know there's more than that. Okay, there's brown one. So 
we can do that, brown one set, and we can see that it maps to that particular texture, and so on. And this is literally how it works. The texture palette is kind of interesting because, uh, the texture palette is actually kind of interesting because you can search for particular textures if you know what you want to go through here. If you, want, if you know what you're going after, you can immediately do that and you can search and you can see all the ones that match that particular uh, search term. You can also look for textures that match a particular width and height. Same thing, let's say um, 72. So these are the small doors, for example. Small doors, grates, that sort of thing. Very useful little, very useful little tool here. And then if you find something, you can immediately take and come back. Say you want to take and replace a particular texture. Uh, you go the opposite direction. You get the value from the texture palette. So, boom. And it sets appropriately. And so on. So that's the little, that's the little foray into the texture palette right there. Um, top and bottom work the same way. And as always, you need to make sure that you're dealing with the correct, uh, you're dealing with the correct side def. The side def definitions are actually selected using the radio buttons here for front and back. You also have, uh, in order for you also have in here the concept of a special now for this i am actually going to go up a little bit i'm going to use the move tool just a little bit to pan around to another part of the level here to something that looks like a door so we've got a door here and we're going to look at the special special properties for this door uh, come back to select and we'll select the front face here. We'll see this is big door two, of course. We can take a look and it's that texture right there, of course. We see that it's a two-sided texture and we see that there's a special attached to it. If you look at list, you'll see uh, the individual's, uh, the individual's uh, specials here. It doesn't automatically take and select them here, but I can tell you here that one is manual door raise and selecting a particular value will alter it here in this field. This is how you take and attach special attributes to specials. And again, the value of this particular list box is defined as part of the project structure we'll see uh, line specials. We see number of specials here, and it's defined as a whole series of numbers followed by their display values. And again, this was here so that if you license the engine from id, you could take and modify to add additional specials or whatnot and let the editor know about them very easily on a project to project basis. We'll go ahead and quit, come back. Oops, apologies. So we have the, we have the meat and potatoes of the line inspector here. The only other thing here is that you also have what is essentially a uh, first column calculator and you can use this to basically uh, align the first column values based on a known offset here. So you can quickly take and scoot things over so that you can quickly align textures as you move across uh, the walls of a level. Line inspector done. Okay, texture palette, we'll move that out of the way. I'm trying to take and just keep the individual panels open and close them when they're not needed so we don't crowd the display too much. In real actual use, uh, you're gonna find that uh, you're gonna have a lot of different panels open. So this brings us to thing.
Why not? We'll go ahead and just go straight to thing. And I will make sure we're in select here. And this is our thing, this is our thing panel. And you'll see all the individual bits of all the little square thingies. Yes, very scientific term, square thingies. These are all things. These are all uh, sprites that are part of the level, ranging from weapons that you can pick up, ammunition that goes with them, enemies, dead fragments, whatever. They're just they're how you place the sprites. And once you take and select, again, like with everything else in the program, once you take and select a particular thing using the select tool, uh, the thing inspector will update and you can see the uh, you can see what's going on here and once again I will point out we'll come back out for just a moment because <laughs> we have to we'll see that there is a display file for things as well and once again we have all the different things so this is what is populated as you take and add and remove things from the uh, thing editor here it will take and put them in this file coming back we have a we have the thing and it's uh, angle whereas how it's placed and you can use the buttons here to adjust the orientation of a particular thing which is useful especially for player launch points uh, enemy putting in making enemies face the right way and so on uh, you have a button here for suggest new type and this is really of use and this is one of the things that um, really makes a major difference uh, between DoomEd and the other editors. Remember, DoomEd is an in-house uh, level editor. So the game was being worked on, new, new enemies, new types were being designed inside the engine, and you needed a way to take and express those things inside the editor. And sometimes these things would be designed inside the editor first and then put into the code. And to this end, you could take and suggest a new type, which would create a new thing record that you could then take an in, that you could take a name, assign types to, et cetera, you know, and, and assign default angles to, default options, that sort of thing. Moving down, of course, we've got the fields that define the thing, angle, type, name, pretty self-explanatory here. This only makes, this is only in terms of the displayable, the, the, only in terms of the level editor, just so you can see a user displayable name for a particular thing. It has no bearing on the game engine itself. All the game engine cares about is type. Um, you have the difficulty settings here. And when you first take and place down a thing, none of these are selected. So you have to go through the process of selecting which difficulty levels that you want to use. In addition, you also have mutually exclusive toggles for network and ambush mode. Um, and you have, uh, again, a difficulty display here as to whether or not you see these things on the auto map so you can select them here. No, no, no. Okay, great. Um, you have the concept of an icon. So instead of a square, you actually can uh, create an icon and assign that icon to a particular thing to display on the map. None of the project files that I actually have utilize this. So everything basically just says no icon. In addition, you also have anywhere, uh, this is kind of a prevalent thing as far as these tools are concerned. There's a color well here so that you can define a particular color for a particular thing type. And this gets updated in real, all this gets updated in real time. Uh, of course, update thing data and the, all, and the huge pile of things. 
in this particular project, there's uh, everything from armors to things that uh, to things that block your way to key cards, dead fragments, uh, individual uh, demons, otherwise known as enemies. Here, they're literally called demons. Uh, you have uh, yeah more body fragments and. Uh, bits and pieces of uh, very scary looking things uh health and the player starts the player starts for this particular level for example are actually over here uh we'll, we come back down we'll see that all the player spawn points are over here for each one of these so in an essence, this is what you're this is what you're combing through when you're taking and placing things down. This is the panel that you interact with. It's all pretty much just smashed onto here and pretty much immediate. Which brings us to we basically left off with the line with the line editor. And we have the thing editor. And you saw the texture palette. Now the interesting thing about the texture palette is that you have a number of uh, you have a number these textures are actually built up of smaller pieces, believe it or not. And to edit those smaller pieces, we can click on a particular texture and double clicking on it will bring up the texture editor, which you can also bring up through here. And with this, you can take and assemble a new texture with values that uh, with these values right here this you can choose the particular texture set that you want to pull from assign you know build the individual textures in so you can uh, take and click them pull them in you know let's say that's it's built from that piece that piece that piece that piece and you can basically cobble together new textures from the patches inside that are that have been pulled from inside the wad file here and make new ones so this brings us all the way down how do we know that things are sectors if you've done any level design in doom at all you know that pretty much all of the level structures in doom are built up from individual lines and those lines may are brought are consolidated into sectors which are areas of a common uh, height as well as a common floor and ceiling and lighting characteristics you'll notice there is no there is no explicit take these line defs and bring them into a sector Instead, what actually happens is as you uh, as you draw these things out, the editor is making a note of uh, how these line defs are connected together, and they're going, okay, this is most likely a sector. So that when we take and use the sector get and fill here from the tools palette, we can uh, immediately take and select and have access to the properties of that particular sector or the properties of this sector. As I'm clicking on the individual pieces, you can see the different sector bits and pieces as they come into view. Again, the sector editor should be relatively familiar to those of you who um, are who have used level editors in the past you have uh, you have a height you have a ceiling height floor height uh, it gives you total height based on the uh, relative difference of these two values and you have a light level here that you can take and move up and move down uh, you also have uh, if you have tags that you want to assign to a particular sector, you know, such as for secrets and whatnot, you can find all of the lines that match a particular tag, or you can find all of the sectors that match a particular tag. Uh, you also have um, you also have the special list 
which again, sector specials. I won't go out again. Again, this is another DSP file right here so that you can see all of the different uh, special characteristics that you can apply to a, to a uh, sector such as nukage damage and you know, glowing lights, etc. And again, because this is being used in the context of developing a game, uh, you can also have uh, you can also have suggest value so that you can have a new uh, a new particular special to do something else if you take and add it into the game engine. Again, now the way that you'll notice here that we have. Down here, we have the palette of individual flats, which is what they call the individual bit pieces that make up the floors and the ceilings. Uh, there are, there is, uh, there is one, since I'm running the Doom 1 project here, the special sky flat is right here at the end of flat set number one. Um, so you can scroll through, you can look at the individual, you can look at the individual flats. I can say I want to replace the ceiling with uh, this guy right here. So I double click, bam, bam, it will take and replace that. Now, what it's actually done here, and this is a very important point as to how this works. I currently have a particular sector that is, that is selected using get fill here, boom. It's this guy right here. There's no indication that this particular sector has been selected, but I have it. But it's here. If I want to take and change the properties of this sector, I use Get Fill using the left mouse button here to select it, and then I alter the values that I want to select, and then I use the right mouse button to apply that particular set of values to a sector. John Romero essentially called this a sector flood fill because that's how he envisioned it actually working here. So you would get the properties of a particular sector, modify them, and then take and apply them using, uh, using something that looked and acted like a flood fill. So that's literally how you take and apply new sector, you know, how you apply new sector attributes here. Everything that's in the sector editor panel will be applied to all of the uh, area that's covered by the particular sector that's, that you've selected for the fill. And to avoid confusion, you can actually go back, select, and deselect off of it so you're not confused as you start moving through other things. Of course, uh, part of the reason why this is here is so that if you want to take and quickly apply a common aesthetic to a particular sector on the walls with via the line defs, you can. So again, I can take and go here, come back here. Okay, great. I'll use the right mouse button here. And all these line defs are suddenly selected so that I can go into the line panel and quickly change their values. Get. Boom. So with that, that moves us down to, I think that's pretty much I think that's pretty much all the panel bits and pieces. Let's see what else do we need to cover here. So again, the way that things are modified, the things the way that the the, re, the way that things are moved here, we come back to the tools, deselect, and once you have a select uh, once you have a selection on, let's come back in a bit for closer. You can move by vertice because these vertices are connected you can move them you can for example as we saw earlier take and separate a set of points by selecting them and at which point 
you now can pull them apart. They're both, uh, since I selected the line def, this particular point has been severed, has been severed on both sides. Or you can fuse them back together by connecting the points. then selecting the line itself and fusing the points back together. So, select tool in a nutshell. Zoom is very handy, especially when both your left and right mouse buttons work, so you can quickly move in or move out of a particular area. In combination with the move command, which you can use with keyboard shortcuts, you can quickly take and pan around the level. Sector get and fill, which you saw. And finally, really new thing. And you'll notice as I, as I selected new thing, the thing inspector immediately came up so that I could take and quickly select something. Uh, I can, you know, I can add a barrel. No problem. All I have to do at this point is pick its destination. Boom. And there's a barrel. And since that's dark blue, we really can't see it. Maybe this needs to be green. You can. It's just as easy. Select it. Do that. Sure. And... Oop, did I? Ah. I don't know. Anyway, okay. Uh, yeah, this is what I. This is what killed me for going off script. Line specials and sector specials you already saw, but they're here. You can get to them quickly in the panels if you need to get to them. So with that, we've kind of done almost a complete run through of the entire editor just kind of a quick whirlwind tour there's one oh yeah there is one other thing i do need to show here and it's kind of odd but it it uh it reaches out to the fact that this was used as an in-house level editor and that potentially assets could move between projects and what this essentially let you do was say you wanted to take the level structure from a Doom 1 level and move it to use Doom 2 textures or flats or things, you could use the remap textures window to basically grab a particular texture. Let's say I want to move Startan 3 to Brown 1. We can, sorry. We can add it to the list of textures. And once we take and build up a list of textures and things we want to remap, we can take and do the remapping function and it will move all of those textures to the new texture. It's very handy if, again, if you're taking and moving a, le moving a level that you want to start from, from another project, maybe something that was set to the side and got moved to a different game. Well, you could quickly take and remap things like textures, uh, remap things like the flats, much the same way, even things, uh, line specials. And finally, uh, if you just wanted to get rid of all the things from the map, you could basically take and select the things that you wanted to go to remove from the map, uh, add things selected in panel, build up a list, strip it from the map, clean everything up. Just little bits of house cleaning and maintenance and or uh, migration that you can do that's inside of Doomed. It's, it's a nice touch, really. You can even, it's kind of funny, uh, there is a piece of software here that's part of this called Doom Print, which can take and print the current map on your fancy laser printer at the time. Or send it via fax. <laughs> anyway. Okay, so we're at roughly the 45 minute mark here. And uh, so what we really want to do for this second part of the video is we want to take and use this here to create a simple little map so you can see how the editor actually functions. For that, we will actually take and 
I'm going to just close this project. I don't want to do, no, don't save it. Uh, and I want to kind of, I'll take, just pe peel all this away. Put all that away. We All we have out here is our toolbox here. And we need to do a little bit of maintenance before we actually take and do some level editing here. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to take the relevant, I'm going to take and create a new project with a single level and I'm going to take and, and copy over the display files that we've seen earlier into the new project so I can easily use them. To do this, all we really need to do is make a new folder. We'll just call it demo and we'll immediately go back into DoMed and make the new project. No, I do not. Thank you, though. Go to local id where it is. There should be. Oh, uh, my bad. I accidentally created a demo folder inside here in the wrong in the wrong thing. No big deal. We'll just take it. Excuse me. Uh, come back to the right area. That was my bad demo. And we'll come back to Doom Ed here. We'll oh, we'll do a new project. No, I do not. Uh, demo and place it here. It will create a, a project.dpr file. And we need to specify which WAD we're going to use. Well, we're going to use the Doom 1 WAD, so we select it right here. I've got it in local, I local id. Um, no, do not save it. Okay, so now we have a brand new blank project. We'll go ahead and create the map. Oops, I hit the button here. Just select and do that. E1, M1. And we're doing this just so it can be easy and easy for us to test here. Uh, now, once we do this, if we go in at this point, we have an empty slate in which to work. But we're going to find some things missing. In particular, if we go to the different panels, like say for example, line specials, we'll find all of these individual panels are suspiciously empty, except for the texture editor here, because all of that's pulled from the wad from the wad file. Well, we really, really want those textures in our uh, in our project. So now that we've created this project, and now that we've created a single level inside of it. Which is ironically important. If you don't, if you create a project and don't create any levels, the next time you load it, the editor will crash. Just so you know. But we've ha we have a demo file here. We have our E1M1 DWD. We have our DSP files, and a few of these need to be replaced, and some need to be added here so that we can uh, so that we can use this effectively. We'll take and quit Doomed Doomed for a bit. And we'll come over here to Doom Maps, and I'm going to take and copy the relevant files over. We're first going to take and select them individually. One, two, three, four, five. Five items here. Boop. And put that up here on the shelf for a moment. We're also going to take a little script that I've written here called Test which just runs Doom with the appropriate level. If you want to, you can dig down and look at it. It's just a shell script that calls uh, Doom app with our uh, wad. Okay, so there's our test. Everything's on the shelf there, and I am going to go to the destination folder, demo folder, and I'm going to copy these into, yeah, make sure that's the right key. Yep, okay. Yes, we're going to replace them and repeat for all actions. Sure. And we're going to do the same thing for the demo here. Bam. Okay. So now the project files have been, been copied and our little test script is in our project directory here ready for us to use. We go ahead. I'm pretty much done with the workspace here for right now. We come back in to DoomEd. And if you want to, if you want to, you can actually go ahead and come into preferences here and uh, alter 
your preferences so that it loads this project up by default. Sure, why not? Uh, we'll go ahead and open our project in the meantime. Go to demo, open up our project DPR, and you'll see that it took a little bit longer this time because it's loading up all the textures and things that we've specified in the DSP files. This time when we come into our particular panels and look at everything, we'll see that everything is reasonably populated. We'll pull you out. And we look at the texture palette. The texture palette's now populated. The line specials are populated. The sector specials are populated. Uh, there are all the flats and everything are now, in, are now in the sector editor. Everything's ready to go, and we can now use it. So with that, let's make our, let's make our little test level here. Now what we're going to make is a single room uh, with, an entry, with an entryway. Uh, kind of a little in kind of a little foyer and uh, two little pedestals on either side of the room which will contain things and we'll put an atrium in the middle that steps down just a little bit sound good okay so to do that what we need to do is we need to start defining our we need to start defining our level structure here for that the quickest way we can do that, since we're going to take and build what is essentially a square room here, I'll use the polyline. To use the polyline, we take and use the left mouse button to select a point to start from, and then from that point, we take and then press the left mouse button again to define that point. And since this is polyline, it will start from that point for the next line, and so on. Notice that our grid settings right here are set to 8. That means that each one of these grid sections right here that it snaps to is exactly 8 texture units long or 8 texture units wide. This is very, very, this is very helpful. And uh, every 64, uh, this, this, this extrapolates so that every 64 shows up in a big grid line, which for the default setting just happens to be very useful for flat placement here because it aligns perfectly with how the flats are placed. So we'll go ahead and continue. And again, if you, uh, for those of you familiar with Doom level editing here, this should be extremely familiar to you. I'm going uh, clockwise so that the individual textures here for this but for these side desks face inward so that the player can see them we'll go ahead and uh, 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 sure click 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 now you might think okay well how do i stop this to stop the polyline all we really have to do is click on the same point again at which point the polyline's done We've done our thing here, and we can, since we're in polyline mode here, if we take and start something else inside here, it will immediately start again. So we'll go ahead, just for the sake of argument here, I'm going to take and put a piece inside here. This is kind of an atrium-like area. And again, don't forget to take and click on it again. So we got our atrium here. Well, now let's take and deselect here because I'm going to take and move some things around. Now see, I messed up here. Forgot I was in polyline mode. So just click on the same point again and it will go off. Remember to use the select. And at this particular point right here, uh, this is all set up so that uh, this is all set up so that with our, everything that we've created is all selected. So if we want to take and do some mass texture, uh, some mass texture applying here, we can. I'm going to take and move the project panel out of the way. We're going to go into the texture palette. Yep, make sure the texture palette's there, and we're going to go into the line depths here because we need to do some setting up. Right now, these, uh, these, these are set to some weird default values which will crash things if you do not set them out. So we really need to zero them out. Boop, 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 boop. Do this all here. So this is all, 
Now, this is only needed for the first time that this runs through because this project is new. It was using weird default values. Uh, when you create new lines, it will use the values currently in the line inspector to create new lines. So uh, we'll go ahead and I'm going to use gray 5 as our starting point here. And we're going to take and apply that using get because we want to get this from the texture palette and place this here and uh, go ahead. OK, we're good there. Now we have that. Now we have that applied. And I'm going to do a little bit of finagling here because I want to make this line just a little bit longer. Maybe. I don't know. Scoot this around. And I want to potentially take and move this. So with select here, select with the lasso, and I can take and move this over to something a bit more symmetrical. I don't know. Maybe, maybe this is an indication that perhaps I need to make this a bit longer. Sure, no problem. Select vertice, select vertice, bam. Okay, so now we can start populating out our room. So the first thing we really need to do here is we'll go ahead and make our atrium. Uh, for that, We'll take and select all of these lines here. We're gonna zero out this particular texture. And I'm gonna put gray, gray five on the top and on the bottom. Cause it's gonna go down, a step down, but there's also gonna be a hole in the ceiling. So we need textures on both sides of this. Oop, making sure as well, oops. And this is kind of, I made a fundamental mistake, but this is something that can be corrected. I used the wrong side of the side def. And some of you were screaming at me for this. I know. It's okay. We can fix that. Come back over here. Everything zeroed out. And I will just take and place it. Boink. And then we come right back in here. Do the same thing again. Zero out. Get and get. And we're okay again. We want to take, and since we want to be able to pass through these lines, we need to turn off block, turn on two sided. And suddenly, these particular lines will become transparent. Groovy. So, with that, now what, the, what remains is to set the height. Now for this, we're going to set the height of the surrounding room to 128 and then add, uh, subtra uh, subtract 8 from the height on, for the floor and add 8 to the height for the, add 8 to the ceiling for the atrium to kind of make it, you know, give it a nice beveled look. For that, we just need to go to sector get and fill so that we make sure that we have the right thing. Deal with the outer sector first and we'll set some things up. We have, some, we have some light type things going on in here. That may not be what we really want. So I will take and replace that with uh, this brick here for the ceiling. And I will replace the floor with metal, just because, where are you? There you are. So now that's there, that's there. And we want to take and set the ceiling height to 128 and the floor to zero. Make this really easy. And we want an average light uh, somewhere around in there. Sure, that's cool. But we haven't, again, we haven't applied this yet. So we have to go over to uh, sector get fill, make sure that's there. Then take and use the right mouse button to take and apply that particular sector. Okay, now that brings us to this guy in here. So now, uh, with these particular elements still kind of here, we want to make a we want to make some small changes. We want to increase the height of the ceiling. We want to decrease the height of the floor ever so slightly to open things up a bit. And I want to take and bring in the light because this is going to be a sky texture. So we come down here to our sky texture, and we assign it to the ceiling. And we go ahead and let's see here. 
Do, 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 do. Da, da, da. Okay, very good. The floor matches up just fine. Uh, so there we go. And now we need to apply this particular section to the middle here. Right mouse button. Oop. I was accidentally, I accidentally hit the left mouse button. My bad. We can reset it. So come back here, 128.0. Oh, sure, get those particular settings. And we just set the ceiling to that again. And we set the atrium right there. So there is our there's our atrium right there. Now the other thing that we're going to do is I'm going to make a set of, of pedestals. And so we're not wasting any time here. I'm just going to make these pedestals square. But you can make them whatever shape you wish. Uh, and this is very simple for this. This is a tran tran transparent here. Uh, you'll see that these are also two-sided here, and they'll also have gray 5, gray 5. So when we take and create the new lines, they'll also have these particular properties. So we start over from sector edit here, come back to, oops, shoot. Da -da -da. Uh, I ain't got no leg, Lieutenant Dave. Let me make sure I pull all this correctly. You have to make sure you hit the right mouse button here, and especially because my right mouse button doesn't work, I'm having to do a workaround, which, which kind of gets me confused sometimes. But no big deal. Uh, I can take and fix this easily enough. Come back over here, uh, 128.0, and we can just kind of fix this real quick. My bad. Please bear with me. So we select the outer sector here, make sure that's okay, that's okay, sure, no problem. Uh, and I'll set the I'll set the I'll set the ceiling to brick. Mm-hmm. And Just remembering, I, I had been practicing this for days trying to take and trying to get this right. So it's been kind of interesting to try and get this. So we come back in here with this setup right here, bang, bang, and sky. And now, ah. Uh, Come on. I hope I'm in the right state. Oh, no. No, no, no. I'm so sorry. So sorry, guys. Something like that. Sure. Let's do that. We're in sector get fill. There we go. So now we have our inner and outer here. Boom, boom, everything good. Okay. So now we can make our now we can make our pedestals. Ah. <sighs> so we start by building polyline. And because we want the uh, side devs to face into the room, we're actually going to take and build this counterclockwise. Mm -hmm. And again, mm -hmm. so uh, making sure that we kill the polyline, come back to select real quick because I'm going to do a little change because these vertices actually need to come out a little bit. Okay. So there we go. And now we're going to take, and instead of using gray five here, I'm actually going to use tech wall. So we come back to our texture palette and we'll use tech wall one. Sure. Why not? We'll take and select all of the individual line diffs that we know we want to pull. We can do them individually like I'm doing here. I could just use the lasso. Doesn't matter. Uh, and then we're going to get and get. Make sure that's all set up. Okay, great. And then I'm going to take and add a particular line diff special here. 
to do an effect for first call scroll so that the uh, so that the pedestals appear to ripple. So with that, we'll go ahead. Okay, we're good. Special is now set to 48. And the only thing left to do now is to set the uh, is to set the height of these particular columns to the appropriate areas here. So for that, we'll go ahead and start with the relative set of the room here using sector get and fill. Okay, looks good to me. I'm going to take this and we're going to bring these down and bring this up to 16. And we're going to bring this down to 88 minimum height here. And for the effect, I'm going to take and place since all of these right here, you'll notice that I put these on particular grid lines here to match up with the flats. So when I take and use the this particular light here, for example, it will match up. So we have a light up here. It's now part of the ceiling here. And I want to use the blue carpet for the bottom piece here for the floor for both of these. So now this is set up, but I also want to take and add some light. I want to flood this with light and that's good. That's good. Let's look and see any other special light glowing here. Sure. We'll add that just, just because, uh, and let's see, with that, that, and that, now I can take and flood fill these particular areas. So now that we've got this particular set up, we use sector get and fill, use the right mouse button to fill these two with the same properties. Now that's set up. Finally, I wanna take and add one additional sector here that uh, is a bit shorter than the overall room here to hold the sort of faux entryway. For that, that's easy. We again use the polyline here. We'll take and create our, our little entryway here. Click, going clockwise, killing our polyline tool, and we'll go ahead and go into select. See right now, again, these are all transparent. They shouldn't be. We'll take and change that uh, to block so that they are walls again. Oop, come on. Yeah, come on. Why are you still so on blow? Okay, boom, boom, get. And yeah, I don't know, maybe that. We'll go ahead on the other side of this. Let's see. Boom, boom, come on. Block, block. Why are you acting funny? You shouldn't be. And we will go over to here. Why is this happening? Okay. We'll figure it out in just a moment. Oh, wonderful things about demo about the demos here. Let's see. Boom, boom, boom. Come over here to door. Funny thing is, if this crashes and I'm not able to take and, and, and recover from this, I'll have to record this demo all over again. I hope you guys don't mind. Door two, door three. Trying to remember where these doors are. There we are. So there we go. Assign that to door three. Sure, bam, that's back there. Why the hell is this happening? Front and back. Two-sided block. Impassable. And this needs to become two-sided. This is weird. Okay. <sighs> you know what? I'll rebuild it here. Because I don't like the way this had this. I don't like the way this happened. 
So I'm going to take and select it and just blow it out, blow it out the water here, leaving that one transparent line def right there. That's fine. We'll select this guy right here. Sure, reasonably so. And then we'll use that as our starting point to make new lines. There we go. That should be fine now. And ironically, this has now taken on the characteristics of these surrounding gray bits. So now when we look, we can see these are all gray five, impassable. Okay, sounds good to me. Uh, need to change this to, to this right here. Sure, no problem, bam. Uh, and then that needs to be zeroed out. And we need to basically take and do a top and bottom. And I think the, the quickest way here is to basically do this. We'll do that and we'll get, and we'll do that. Boom, boom, sure. There's not gonna be, the bottom's not gonna be visible, but it doesn't hurt for it to be defined there. Fine, whatever. Um, so there we go, got that. And now we need to set the sector height. Sector get fill. Uh, make sure that we're looking at this relative to this. Sure, no problem. I used, I clicked on it, left mouse button here to get these sector attributes in play. Then I want to bring it down. So since I know that the height of this particular door is 72, if I can get to it, Come on. Since I know that the particular height of this is 72 here, I need to take and at least make it that height. No problem, I'll go ahead and set it. I will take and flood the light here. I wanna add a particular special here for flickering because reasons. I wanna add I want to do some lighting up top and use the blue carpet again. So we'll put the blue carpet on the floor. We'll take and uh, we'll take and use some lighting up here. Where are you? And we'll use this lighting up here for the ceiling. Okay, so now that's set up. We're good to go here. And now very carefully, I take and use sector get fill with the right mouse button here to take and apply that to this sector. Okay, so now we have our atrium here, we have our pedestals. The only thing left to do is to drop a couple of things on here. We'll take and drop a soul sphere and a shotgun and a baddie, just to have something. Uh, let's see, so with that, boom, we go new thing bring up the thing panel automatically. Sure, now we're gonna, we need some, th we, we need some things here. First thing we need is our player one start. This is important. Otherwise it just ain't gonna happen. We go ahead, place the player one start there. We make sure that we're facing the right direction, going facing north so we can see out. And uh, we go ahead and make sure <laughs> that our difficulty switches are set correctly. And finally, we go ahead and add, start looking at the next thing here. We want to take and place a soul sphere over here, for example. Why? Because it looks cool. I don't know. <laughs> this, is not a, this is not a game theory class here, so it's not important. And we also need a, a Wii upon. So I'm just going to, because reasons, I'm going to drop the rocket launcher on the other side here. Taking care, so right now the thing inspector has this set for easy, normal, and hard. We want to make absolutely sure that our particular things have the correct attributes assigned to them so that we can actually see them. Finally, we want to take and add a demon here because the demon... Uh, has fireballs that glow here. Where are you? Skull, torso, me, trooper. Where are you? Duh. No, 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 no. Where are you? Come on, demon, bruiser, uh, uh, sergeant, shadow sergeant, skull, spider boss. No, 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 no. 
Where is Demon Skull? No, not Skull, but where's the Demon? Oh yeah, uh, Demon Bruiser, Demon Head. Yeah, here you go. We'll do that. Sure, why not? We'll add that new thing, and we'll put him you know, right here, and he's facing uh, this way, south. So come back to select, we'll kind of just nudge him into a nice symmetrical place because OCD, and there we go. There's our completed map. We can take and save the project, and we can do the map. We can take and build the, uh, do the BSP on the map here, and you'll get a little surprise when you're done. <laughs> so there you go. I mean, uh, yeah, odd little things buried inside an in-house development tool. Finally, we can look at map statistics. And we can see what was used and where, how many of a particular texture was used, where the things are, that sort of thing. And with that, with hopefully everything okay, we can go in and test this thing. Well, how do we test it? Um, you'll recall that I had a test script that was written here, and we can take a look at it real quick. It's really not much going on. Uh, if we go to here, we'll see our test script, all which all it does, it's a shell script with executable, that takes and goes directly into the Doom application and passes the file parameter in here. That's it. So with that, um, we can go to our workspace. I'll pull you out of the way. We'll do our test. We can do a number of shortcuts here. You'll see 100%, 200%. If we do Command-2, we get 200%. And new game. Oh, boy. Pardon me while I pause to see what the hell happened. I think I might be missing my spawn points. Let's find out. Ah oh, yes, accidentally. I accident. It looks like I accidentally set demon to. Uh, I set myself to a demon here. There were no player spawn points. If we go back and we can see now, when I take and select this, you'll see that I've come back, fixed this, going into the thing panel, selecting this appropriately, and there we go. Let's hope that's the only glitch. So there we go. Save a project just because we don't have to, but just because. Okay, hide, and we run the test script again. And I think I'm facing the wrong way. Oh, yes, I am. I forgot to change my alternate. Ooh, well, that was interesting, but I think I may have made a slight mistake. <laughs> We can see our thing here, all right. And I think I didn't, I think I accidentally got rid of the demon, but yeah, there we go. Minor things that we need to take and debug, but overall, okay, I guess. We, I guess we can try to take and correct them in the last few minutes of this video. Let's see. Uh, so we've got some missing textures here, some things that should not have happened over here. Looks like we have a little bit of sector spillage here that we can take and correct. And we're missing our demon because the difficulty was not set for this guy. But it looks like, at least from here, ooh, that also needs to be corrected. Okay. So let's see if we can fix this here. Boom. We leave. We exit. Hmm. <laughs> Do this live, it'll be great. <laughs> okay, so let's do a little, let's do a little looking around here. And gray five, gray five, gray five, gray five, gray five, gray five. Nothing 
too terribly unusual here. And if I take a look on the opposite sides, there shouldn't be anything on the opposite sides. At least I don't think. Okay, so we know that, sure. Let's take care of some of the low-hanging fruit. We'll come back to the thing palette. Oops, sorry, not uh, the, thing, the thing editor here. And we will edit you and make sure that the difficulty level is set. Boom, there we go. Then we want to take and look at the sectors. We'll, look, we'll open up the sector editor, sector inspector, sector editor, and take a look real quick. Just pull that out of the way for a moment. Because reasons. And use sector get, sector set. Actually, I'm going to take a look real quick make, make sure my zoom's okay. Okay, yeah, we're all right. So, bear with me here. Sector get and fill. Let's have a look at you. So that's this. Okay, nothing weird here. And that's this. Uh huh. Floor high. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. And finally, 72 and O, 128 and O. Strange. This looks right. That looks right. That looks right. So what happened? Let me go ahead and just make sure that this is somewhat sane. Let me look at the walls to make sure we're okay. Okay, great. We'll just go ahead and reset this just because. Am I? Okay. This is very strange. This is very strange. I don't get it. I don't get it. What the hell? And now it looks like, oh, because I'm hitting the wrong key. Okay. That should be fine. Very strange. Anyway. I don't know. Well, anyway, with this even here, let's try and save it again, see if it works. Because that looks right to me. All right. Uh, I forgot to turn this guy. Uh, but this... Oh, shit! Ah, whoopsie! Oh my god! Ah! But there we go. It fixed the atrium here. Everything seems to be rendering okay. And this will end our little demonstration here of Doomed, uh, which was id Software's in-house uh, level editor used for Doom, Doom 2, used by Raven Software for Heretic and, Her and Hexen, and ultimately now uh, hopefully a piece of a wonderful piece of archaeology that is not only preserved but is uh, but can be used by others so again if you want to take and follow along and use this you can feel free to take and download the uh, program from archive.org uh, the complete vm is there with 86 box with everything needed uh, so you can just uh, unpack it and run it so with that, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I'll be making more of these as I uncover things and put things together. So until next time, guys. Have fun.